Alright, alright, alright. What the hell is going on, everybody? We got Clem in the bottom left side of the map playing a best of three up against a nightmare in the top right. Uh, an aggressive Protoss player who's turned himself into a bit of a more well rounded beast over the more recent months. Nightmare's always doing well in those uh, those Asian cups in the Korean scene, kicking butt over there. Uh, does get overshadowed by guys like Hero a lot of the time, but he's so good, man. Probe pulling back as well. We get the pylon, probes coming in. I got timed out by Trigger because they said GG, says Visionary Junk. Sometimes we get upset when we lose games. Just remember, that's his ego lashing out, probably. Unless you're being a dickhead in some other way. There is sometimes context matter. Sometimes sometimes around what else was being said. And sometimes people click on the wrong thing. Even when I said, you did well. I think it's, I think it's just one of those things. Um... <laughs> Competitors get very up. They, they just don't want to hear, oh, you did really good, buddy. They just don't want to hear a lot of things, right, when they lose. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault for saying it. It's 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 not a big issue, mate. That's that's always a funny story. All right, so depth shading out. Reaper didn't really get any damage. Twilight Council's gone down. We've got a Stalker building. We'll supply block for a moment there, but as the Nexus finishes, should be good. Behind this, bunkers up. Reactor on the factory. Uh, sorry, reactor on the barracks. Factory building a Hellion and a Starport. Very standard play for Clam. And he wants to scout what's going on. He'd like to kill a probe, but I think scouting is more important. He gets himself a probe. I think he's I think he's able to infer that it's probably Twilight. Like, don't get me wrong, there is adept into Stalker into Sneaky Oracle. Pretty uncommon these days, though. So he's got a Hellion and a Reaper that can go back into Scout later. And the follow-up scouting on, like, the third base timing and everything also gives you a lot of information. Now, this Reaper's running around. Adept's going to intercept. That should be a kill if Nightmare's quick. And he is nicely done. Hellion, though, is the next scout that's going to try to get in to see what's going on. Um, damn, man. Hellion's going to drive into the base. Second and third gateway as well as a Robo Nightmare is playing three gate blink by the looks of it. Oh, I like that. Good, good pro pull by Nightmare to block there. He'll only lose one. Pulls back the weak ones, goes back to mining. And behind this, we've got a medevac. Looks like a single Widow Mine drop, perhaps. Oh, Widow Mine Marine drop. Yeah, that'll do. So just a light pressure for Clem. He's going to go across the map with, and he'll defend with tanks. Second barracks. We do expect a Raven to come out as well. Like, super standard. Just three racks play. And uh, third base in a more standard location. A lot of players, I've been thinking, you know, will they take the purple gas? Against Zerg, it's a bit more defensible. It's still very scary because it's so far forward. But against Terran, I think it's crazy to take that front base. So Nightmare's doing the intelligent thing, the somewhat conservative thing, you could say. And uh, it's going pretty well. Stalker's coming forward. A good point, chat, saying, well, you may have timed the GG wrong. Who knows? <laughs> or maybe there's a weird thing going on. Maybe you told him before and you're like, GG means gay, gay. I'm calling you gay. And because I think it's still 1983, that's still a negative thing. Maybe is that, if you did that, that, that could get you in trouble, Visionary Junk, with the streamer. But yeah, more than likely, he was just upset and he just took it the wrong way as his ego's in a bit of a rage, probably really upset with how he played. When, you, when you're upset with how you play StarCraft or, or how a bit of luck goes bad for you sometimes, usually it's just upset at your own play, though to be fair. Oh, he's not letting it shoot the Stalker. Why not? I mean, he finally does... Oh, because Blink's done. That's why. Duh. Well, he's going to get another Stalker. Or is he? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He's going to lose it on the low ground. He even blinked to the low ground and he still loses it. Oh, man. I was like, good job, Nightmare, keeping that alive. And then, of course, no. Uh-oh. Oh, the tank. The tank in the low ground covering the one in the high ground. So... He's going to lose two Stalkers for that tank. Should be able to get these two out. And he's getting damage on the Raven. Nice micro for Nightmare, to be fair. Shut down the drop. Even though he lost a, a bunch of Stalkers here. He's killed a tank. Like, the unit's lost tab's very even. And he's got a third Nexus mining with charge on the way. Third Command Center hasn't started yet for Clem. I think this is really actually quite a decent start for Nightmare. And I don't normally say that. I, I, I was historically a bit of a Nightmare hater. Because I'd always say the man doesn't probe enough. He just sits on 50 to 55 probes and doesn't build workers. Well, speak of the devil, he's not probing there for quite a few seconds. I guess he just wants to get his gateways up. Against the three racks play, you never know when the stim and shields is going to hit you. So fair enough, my lord, that was dangerous. 
But he keeps the prism alive. Loses 40 hit points. It's not the worst. As long as it survives for now. No fourth and fifth barracks. There we go. Fourth and fifth barracks go down behind the natural. Stalker's still hanging out. Very, very chill. Very chill for Clem. A nightmare is not the kind of guy who's going to take advantage of you for that. Like, he doesn't have a fourth up yet. He's trying to mine these minerals open, but if you don't micro it, notice the probe is kind of derpy. And it just goes to wherever. And it doesn't really open up the patch very far. So, he's going to take the fourth on the right side. Fair enough. That's a good call. Stalker's trying to blink back. Gets himself a widow mine. Nicely done. What's he got behind it? Two Colossus Extended Thermal Ants is almost here. Prism's still alive, which you can use to juggle. Honestly, Clem's army could get Shreked right now. If Nightmare if Nightmare finds him, Nightmare should just jump on his army. Oh, Nightmare's got caught out of position here. He's letting Clem take position. Oh, this is a big mistake for Nightmare. That tank's in a perfect spot. Widow Mine up front as well. Great Widow Mine hit. Hits four Zealots. Sentry's gonna fall. Tank's taking damage, but Colossus doesn't do that much damage to a siege tank. Nightmare is taking so much damage. That being said, three Colossus wrecks this bio army. You can see, even, even with letting Clem get position, the fight isn't, like, game-ending or anything. It's not that terrible for Nightmare. It's still not good, though. Oh, my God, unless Clem gets greedy and loses. Oh, he didn't finish the Medivac! Nightmare changed targets! Let's the full Medivac escape. Oh, that is, that is a bummer. Raven's in the back. It's got seven kills. Nightmare's down on workers now as the third base lands. Orbital morphs. Ooh. Oh, man. I've never seen non-stim marine drops achieve anything. Are they ever worth doing? Yeah, for sure. It's just, uh, depending on when you hit, they might have more than enough defense up. Way lower damage. So you normally want to hit an earlier window. Clem went for his a little bit late when Blink was already done. Still killed a bunch of probes and a couple stalkers, though, so it was okay. It was, it was an evenish trade. And this drop on the right side, that medevac does get shot down. That's good D by Nightmare. Nightmare's got four mineral lines. Like, just transfer workers from your main down here. Build maybe four or five more workers. You don't need more than that. You just need to transfer. It's nine minutes. You meant to transfer at about 8.30 to nine minutes, guys. And, and he's left extra workers there, which you don't need to do. This is something I always point this out, guys. That mineral patch was about to run out, and now he's on 10 out of 8. They'd be way better off mining down here. So when you pull workers, always do it at just the same time, 8.30 to 9 minutes, and always drop your main down to 8 workers left. If you do that every game, it's consistent. You can do the same thing on your natural at about 11 and a half minutes, assuming you did a normal fast expand build. And uh, it's, it's just a bit more efficient. Most pros don't do this these days, and uh, it's a little unfortunate. Legacy of the Void is such a dynamic game. There's so much going on that where it's harder the Storm and Wings was much slower. Players really had the early game and the little tiny details refined to a much higher level than they do these days, I would argue. Um, and it's simply because there's so many more things happening from the start of the game, more things to focus on. So players are naturally a bit more flexible and adaptive. Uh, good pullback for Nightmare. Oh, Prism does get past. That's really good. Prism does get past. He might want to recall. I think this is a good choice. Just hide it in the back, maybe recall it. He's actually going to fly it around the left. Viking's looking for it. There's a lot of dead space on this map, though. That Prism's gonna hide so he, he probably assumes it's recalled clem does not realize that's there zealots deny a lot of mining time delay the barracks uh they pick off two scvs he's up on 70 workers with double robo disruptor so nightmare's gonna play single forge double robo disruptor this is kind of a not not really uh, uh even a, a fully fledged mid game play the prism get out oh wow the prism got out took a few hits from the turret but does escape makes its way home now Fourth base on the rich gas up front for Clem. And Nightmare. I really want to see a second forge here. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's kind of late to commit to it now, I guess. Double auto turret takes out the battery. You just want to rebuild that battery. And uh, go back to mining. Yeah, nice move for Nightmare. Stargate on the way. Nightmare's preparing an air swap. Second forge goes down. Okay, he's, he's got eight gases now. He's thinking about the long game. Six gases, actually. He hasn't taken seventh and eighth. Clem accidentally F2s his Raven. He could drop an auto turret here to be a nuisance. He does realize and sends it off to the corner, at least. Did he Did he see the Stargate, by the way? If he clicked on it, he would have. I doubt he clicked on it. 
with command center building turtling up right now. Clem's been playing a lot of just very chill defensive late games. Observer's gonna fly past, see the army coming. I don't think you want to fight with a Colossus right now against those nine Vikings. But if you can, if you can kind of just pull them back just before the Vikings get in range, that could be huge. Zealots do get inside that third base. They're going to do some damage there. Prism goes into the main. Stalkers blink forward. A couple of the Marauders go down. Nice catch for Nightmare. Nightmare's going to go for the planetary now. I don't know if he can get the planetary, but he can definitely do some damage, especially with the Prism in the main. Zealots killing Ghost. Viking does take down the Prism. Disruptors go forward. They're trying to get the army. Massive disruptor on the Marauders and the Marines. Another disruptor shot. Oh, kind of veers off to the side, unfortunately. But 14 SCVs here. Maybe even 15. It's a good start. His disruptors are cooling off right now, so he's got to pull back and let those disruptors recharge. They will be ready in just a few seconds. They're just not ready right now. The Vikings are getting focused down, but they've done their job. They kill the Colossus, and there is still a lot of bio left on the ground. Very good versus the Stalker Zealot. I don't think Nightmare can chase into that planetary again. He's just going to have to reset for a moment. He's got his own fifth base building. I'd like to see a little bit more transferring of these workers, as well as maybe as this game's going along, I, I wouldn't mind him going to 75 workers. 80 might be a little bit much for the style he's playing. And you can see he's really engaging in just gateway man disruptor play, which is good. For a small map this size, I mean, right now with the, the tempo we're at, I don't think he's got room to start like a fleet beacon and more stargates because he's not maxed out and it's not like he's swimming in money. So he's going to instead rebuild a few colossus, try to use the stalker disruptor as best he can. Didn't mind those disruptors taking a few pot shots. He's got six on the map right now. Third robo is a no-brainer at this point. Uh, even four robos would be great. They're only 150 minerals, 100 gas. They're very cheap, but uh, severely underrated. Just how good having those robos is. Now, no micro for Clem. So the zealots actually kill a few guys. Not a great trade still, but better than if it's stutter step, they kill nothing. Gets four SCVs as well. Disruptor shots going forward. As long as you got enough medevacs to non-stop heal, that is huge. Fifth base in the top as well. Bio goes coming forwards in the middle. We'll see what can happen. Is there a graphics thing? Those Colossus are so bright. What are they? This is a skin. These are, um, is that Golden Age? Purifier? I think that's Purifier, right, guys? I think this is a Purifier Colossus. I'm not 100% sure. It is one of the skins. They're a little bit more uh, white. Maybe it is Golden Age, actually. There's a lot of gold on it. I don't know. I feel like Purifier has a lot of cool golden stuff, too. Zealot Stalker hitting the south base. Catch is tearing out of position. It's a big commitment. Oh, Stalkers, though. That's the power of Stalkers, man. Stalkers, because of the ability to blink and just focus down things like planetaries, that's why you have, like, 30 Stalkers in your army. It's so you can do stuff like that. You know, we've seen Harstam give Clem a lot of trouble with the same sort of maneuver. Great disruptor shot, dude. One of the disruptors does go down, though. Clem with some good micro. He just doesn't have the numbers. Nightmare. Nightmare! Oh my god. I mean, you know, is it sweet dreams or beautiful nightmares? Uh, Clem can listen to all the Beyonce he wants, but we know that this is a, a bloody... This is a bloody horrible nightmare, mate. It's a, it's definitely not a sweet dream for him. He is going to sleep right now. And nightmare with a very nice game one on Crimson Court. All right, guys, game two, Nightmares in the bottom right of Sight Delta. And look at this barracks placement for Clem right outside his base for the quickest possible Reaper, not to mention a bunker already going up there behind it. Clem is going double gas. He's pulled off gas, so he's just going to go for the factory um, and then into, of course, uh, a command center, no doubt, in the near future. Nightmare did probe scout, but unable to find the proxy uh, as he didn't really look around too much for it, to be fair. And look at that, SCV survives bunkers on the way, which means the Zealot has to go after that. The Reaper will, of course, ignore the Zealot and say, well, let's go after those probes. And you know what? As long as that SCV builds on that side, it might be okay. Clem is going to take out two probes of the Reaper. Bunker finishes. The SCV does go down, though. And you know what? I don't think he cares about the bunker that much, right? I think you might as well just sell it straight away. He's already killed three probes. It's a good start. He does lose an SCV. He should have already sold the bunker, guys. He waited too long. And he doesn't get the money back. Big mistake there for Clem, but wait, is he actually going to kill? You can't kill a Stalker with two Reapers, can you? Oh my gosh. Super worth trading a Reaper for a Stalker, because now there's nothing to stop this Reaper. He has to pull probes. Oh man. Who's, who's having a nightmare now, says Clem. I look, look at me. Look at me. I'm a Terran player. I can dance all day. I can dance all day. Stalker's about to come out. The Reaper took a probe hit, <clears throat> so the Stalker should be able to kill it. Should. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. And he gets it. 
If Clem didn't take a probe hit there, he would have been able to regen more and survive that, but hey, hindsight's 20-20, uh, isn't it? Now, for those who don't know, hindsight's 20-20 is an old saying, referring to, of course, when a man bet 20 uh, furs and 20 uh, they were, they were seal furs and 20 uh, pelts from um, from the uh, the jackal, which was very valuable uh, hide. And uh, after, I'm gonna stop. I'll stop. I don't know where I'm going with that. I I will shut up. That's just shut up, Jared. We, let's cast the game. It's a star fall with a tech lab. I don't know if that's for Raven or not. He's building a tank for safety. Nightmare comes out of this, losing four probes and a stalker, but he kills a bunch of stuff too. Who's who's ahead? Who's behind? Well, the command center is not down there. Generally, what I find difficult for Protoss after these openings is their tech's quite delayed. And then their scouting is very delayed, and it's hard for them to figure out, is Terran being greedy? Is he going to shove me with a quick stim? What exactly is the next step? Tank comes to the low ground, Raven's coming out. A couple of extra marines building uh, while he waits for the Raven to pop before he swaps the barracks over. Realizing, hey man, I haven't had a barracks on a reactor. When you open with a proxy... You just have less marines and you are much more vulnerable to early blink in attacks and charge lot yolos and all sorts of stuff like that you don't see it very much but especially after you've been proxied I, I feel like if you can kill the reapers like if they trade themselves or whatever making charge instead of blink and then just yoloing might actually be a good move right because you can like both take a third and go four gate charge on on two gas and just basically do an attack which I imagine you're going to hit by 530 with like 8 plus zealots. Imagine 8 plus charge lots running and you're going you're gonna to kill the tank, the cyclone, marine, a bunch of SCVs. You're going to do so much damage if you could run in right now with 8 charge lots. I know this is a bit of a gimmicky thing. I'm not saying this is something you should do every game and it's super solid. But it's so rare right now that it might actually have a place in this, in this I've defended a proxy barracks game's a little bit messed up meta. Whereas if you let the Terran get away with having so little units at home, just two tanks, Cyclone, couple Marines, then uh, they will very much enjoy these starts. Now, Raven only killed one probe with its first order turret, so great defense for Nightmare. We've got uh, double Marauder, Stim, Shields, Marines building. And he's making sure all that's continual before he goes for the reactors on these two. And he does head up to four gas, Clem. Stalker's looking to blink in the main. That reactor is an easy pickoff, man. He should go for it. I think because there's a lot of Marauders and Cyclones nearby, he's like, he's worried. But Stim's not done, so I, I definitely think he could take out a Reactor or the Stim, one or the other. Raven's going to go home for Clem. He's going to pull it back to try and kill the Observer. He probably could see the Observer, maybe just couldn't reach it. Oh, he knows about it. Is it worth scanning for, though? In case it's too far, because he might not kill it. You know what's funny, guys? I With the new Observer change, a single Corrosive Bile doesn't kill an Observer. In my game against Apple Juice earlier today, I hit an Observer with a Corrosive Bile and it didn't die and I, I felt like my brain broke. I was like, did I not hit that? Because I saw its hit points and shield, its, its, its shields disappeared, its hit points went down to 10 out of 40 and I was like, what? And I was like, oh, this bad boy has 10 more hit points now to survive Widowmind Splash. And that actually means he survives a Corrosive Bile. So if you guys want to kill an Observer now with Corrosive Bile, you need to drop two. Just a heads up for any Zerg players out there. Kind of funny little interaction that I didn't really notice until I actually did that in the tournament today. Yeah, 2020 uh, eyesight, it's, it's referring, 2020 is referring to just having perfect vision, yeah. Saying after the fact you have perfect vision, yes. Yeah, I was being an idiot, jummy man. That's why I cut myself. I didn't even have a good thing I was making. I was just a dumb story I made up. And then I was like, this isn't even funny. Let's stop. So, you know. Sometimes, some, they can't all be winners, you know? Sometimes when you're on stream for many hours, you say some fun stuff, you say some stupid... Did he just kill his own... Guys, did he... What did he just kill? He just killed... Was that a tank? I think he killed one of his own tanks accidentally. Because he didn't have two Cyclones, and I saw a, I saw a piece of track. And Cyclones don't really have tracks on... They kind of do have... They're kind of wheels. Yeah, I think he killed one of his own tanks. Clem... Dude, he must be shook after the game I played against him earlier. I've I've shooken him up. Playing a half an hour game versus Pig, you know? That's, uh... That's, I mean, it's got to lower your IQ, if, if nothing else. Oh, dude, that was a pretty slick drop for Nightmare. He didn't save the High Templar, though. 
kind of cute storms, but he, he doesn't he doesn't save the High Templar. He does save most of those stalkers, which is good. But oh, you don't want to run him like this. Bit of a half baked push here for Nightmare. Nightmare had a sick army, but that drop actually baits him into an awkward fight. Oh, that that might okay. It's fine. It's fine. He's got it now. Clem needs to get out. That storm killed like eight marines, and now he just can't get through the zealots. Good focus fire on the stalkers, to be fair. He did a great job with that. The zealots have charge, though. The stalkers probably going to blink and try to focus the medevacs, I would imagine. Oh, he's actually just focusing the marauders. Fair enough. At the end of the day, though, only a slightly positive trade for Nightmare. And does he have more high templar? He does. Good move. A lot of players don't warp in new high templar quickly enough. And remember, you got to warp them in as quickly as possible because they take a while to gather energy, dude. Trying to catch this army. Clem loses a Marauder and a Marine. Yeah, that's good trades. Nightmare with good micro there. If he wasn't focus firing, he might be losing more units here. But this is actually, I think, good fights for him. The Widow Mines will fire. And they do get a bit of value, though. Four Zealots going down. The Widow Mines survive. So Clem, really just being annoying and chasing and chasing, does get value eventually. Zealots take out the Mule. Fourth Nexus is going to go up in the top. I like this fourth Nexus. I think this one's way too droppable. And then you move down to defend it and they drop your main. So I love expanding in a straight line along the map. Don't get me wrong. It has its weaknesses. You are spread pretty thin. It can work really well. Ooh, okay. Nightmare. I don't know, man. I kind of feel like feedbacking these medevacs would be good, but their energy's not high enough. No. I don't think he can force a fight here. I think it's good to control the map, but he's going to have to back away in a moment. Oh, God. The Widow Mines. The Widow Mines! Oh man, they're not really getting that big a hit, so I actually thought they'd get way bigger. The Storms weren't bad at all. Dude, Nightmare with some killer instinct right now. The Prism goes down just before the warp completes. That looked promising for Nightmare, but then when the Prism goes down, the Immortal drops, and suddenly it turns into an awful fight for Nightmare. Down 2,000 resources and the units lost. Ouchie, ouchies. Glem's fighting back in this one, really putting Nightmare on notice after that game one. I don't think this is the right way for Clem to play. He's been playing so defensive. A lot of the top Terrans have in TVP recently on the new patch. And they've really been letting Protoss get into their comfort zone and, and macro up way harder than they should. And I think we're going to see a return to this style from Clem, Maru, Bian, all these guys. Because they've been giving Protoss too much room to breathe. And if there's one thing we know about Protoss in StarCraft 2 is if you, if you leave them alone, you give them enough time, they're kind of overpowered. Like, they're, they're, maybe not in the very end game. That's always arguable who's better in the very end game. But they can they can kind of power up into, like, the, the, the late mid game, early late game, and, and have so much power there. But the reason that's kept in check is they, they'll die if they're that greedy. You know, there's so many things that kill them. So not giving them that room to just do whatever they want and, and macro up off no army, I mean, is, is huge. Protoss actually, for those who don't know, always wins max out challenges. Um, people people saying like, what's the fastest you can max out? And people experiment with different like races and build orders. And apparently Protoss just chrono boosting probes and Nexi is actually the most efficient way because there's such a delay on getting spawning pools and queens that even though obviously Inject is very powerful, it's actually the chrono boost that has more potential. Great fight so far for Clem. EMP on the Zealots would be nice. I'm surprised he's not dropping it. Let's drop it once they charge. One lands on some of those High Templar. Oh, that's a juicy. I like the way Nightmare moved that up to the little, the little nook here. Dropped a storm across the ledge. He's hanging on. He is hanging on. But he's only got one Colossus out. There's already a few Vikings in the sky. This is a very tough game. Oh, Archon's going down very quickly to the EMP. That's a good snipe. He's just got to get out now because he's damaged. So he, he kind of wants to, Clem wants to pull back for 30, 40 seconds, let his units heal up, get some more EMPs, and then go again. He's getting a fourth bind at 2 is almost done, ship weapons is almost done. Does he have, what's his production like? Seven barracks, two starports, so he's very well set up. Oh, the bio, he didn't give it enough time to heal, and I think that's a mistake. It's going to cost him a few of these expensive marauders and ghosts, but the rallying coming in from the other side, he kind of pre-spreads a bit. These units are overstimmed. Oh, this fight's real scrappy, but Nightmare just doesn't quite have the material to keep up. And what looked like a fight that was a bit dangerous, apparently looked just tempting enough to lure Nightmare into the open, where the Rally could flank, the Vikings could take out the Colossus, and things could go very well for Clem. He's just happy to keep trading in these small army fights, where the Bio and Micro does so well. 5,000 resource lost advantage, exactly. 
And Nightmare's just got nothing. He's got no legs left to stand on. I should have timed that out. I should have said that as the Colossus died because their legs break when they die usually and it looks funny. So that would have been a good joke. I'll save that for another game. In a month from now, when you see me casting a game and I say that as the Colossus are going down, just remember, pre-planned, not actually ad-libbing. Nightmare does have to tap out. Clem ties up the series. It's going to make it to game three. All right, guys, we've got Nightmare down here in the bottom right as well. Sakratoy says you need to link it. Yeah, you do need to link your Twitch account to your Amazon account. Connected it the other day. Appreciate that, Ishtar. Thank you, my friend. All right, guys, we've got Nightmare in the bottom right. And who's in the top left? Clemo. Clemo. I thought my GPS today was saying turn down Clermont Avenue. Apparently, it was just Claremont, it was called. But I feel like that's just how an Australian says Clem's name. Like, Clement, if we're like, if we're trying to be fancy, let's be real. Most of us would just say Clement. We'd be like, hey, Clement, how you doing, buddy? And uh, French people will lose their minds. It's a couple, couple Clements uh, around Australia. Having their name butchered on a daily basis. Probably butchering it themselves, to be fair. Anyways, uh, we've got the reactant barracks. Looks like a bunker. No, no bunker. Wow, very greedy. To be fair, no scout for Nightmare. He's just going for the Zealot. Oh, he went Reactor before Factory. That's why he's got three Marines. Three Marines, more than a match for a Zealot. But if the Stalker were to come as well, or if you chrono like a few Adepts behind, sometimes you can overwhelm the Marines, which is why Clem's pulled back to the high ground. Very conservative. He's even hiding his SCV because he figures there's going to be Adepts shading in in a moment. Now he's like, wait, why is there no Adept yet? Oh, I got five Marines. I should be okay. Five Marines can easily beat a Zealot and an Adept. But then if there's a second Adept plus a Zealot, you need to pull back for these two Marines. So you often see the Terran kind of venturing around, seeing if you can get some unit pickoffs, but not much else. Um, Nightmare's just looking for proxies right now. Very safe play. I like it. Second gate at the front. Robo goes down at 320. That is after starting Blink, so there's still a priority on getting Blink up at a crisp timing. So if we see a Widow Mine drop, Marine Widow Mine drop, anything like that, Blink can shut it down. Stalkers can block the front. So three gate blink seems to be the uh, favorite build order of Nightmare. Hellion trying to get in. Broom broom, look at all that bloody fumes coming out the back of that bad boy. A hey, Hellion does go down. Ooh, okay, we've got gateways there as well. Robo's coming up. Marines trying to pull back. Zealot's coming in. Now, he sees not many Marines. That's a pretty good scout. Because that tells you he may have loaded up a drop. And look at that. Yeah, Nightmare's like, mm, I think you're coming with a drop. I'm going to go move up there. One more chrono on the blink, and he might be able to shut this down. Like, like we were talking, someone was asking in chat. They're like, are non stim Marine drops good? This is just a way of keeping the Protoss honest in the early game, finding some damage. Problem is, if you're hitting after like 4 minutes 40, which he's going to, that's when Blink is finished, about 4.45 usually. And, and and that's the time where you're like, oh cool, let's go in. It's like, dude, he can Blink on you and shut you down. So Clement, I think he's going to just save this. And he's basically going to say, look, if your Stalker start Blinking to my base or harassing me, I'll be able to survive at home, but I'll take some damage. But I'll be able to come in and distract you with this drop. He sees the third base, but he's not willing to go in. And that's a good, good call. Three Stalkers can shoot this down in three volleys. Nine total Stalker shots to take out a Medivac is huge. It's not even Clement, it's Clement. Yeah, you guys go Clement, but that's just because French people like to moan. So French people always correct me on pronunciation. They go, oh no, it's Clement, not, not, not Clement. And I'm like, mate, I'm going to say Clement because that sounds right, you know? As an Australian, if I'm saying Clement, let's just be honest. It's the same thing if I try to say Montreal. If I try to say Montreal the way the bloody Frenchies say it, Montreal, it just sounds like you're having an orgasm all the time. There's a reason why you Frenchies are known as being such an exotic and erotic people. You know, people are like, oh, they're, they're so sensual. And I'm like, yeah, because they're having sex to their language with their mouth. Like, it, it sounds like you're doing naughty things. To, to your language on a daily basis. I don't feel comfortable with it as an Australian. I wish I did, mate. I wish I could embrace your culture more. I love France. I love the food. Love the cheese. Love the wine. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's a bit too much. I've got to draw my boundary somewhere. Otherwise, I stop being an Australian, man. Um, anyways, Raven's going to go around the top side. 
very serious discussion we're having. Remember, guys, everything I say is 100% serious and never sarcastic. You can quote me on that. Uh, I've never made edgy jokes on me stream about uh, race, religion, gender, uh, or, or anything like that. No, 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 no. We absolutely stand by everything I've said. Totally. Raven's going to come in. Good defense setup. So Clem is playing like, just like, I have my Raven on the right, my drop on the bottom. Here's my three racks push, third command center behind it. I don't think he wants to commit too hard, but I actually think Nightmare with the double upgrades behind this, a gateway of Zealots, he's in a really good position if he can not blink his Stalkers away because he never saw the drop down here. He doesn't know about this. He knows about the Raven. So he probably should have left some Stalkers there, but he's deciding, ah, whatever, the shield battery will cover it. Oh, shield battery is actually not being focus fired, which is interesting. Pylon goes down in the north. Couple probes just getting launched up to the surface. Zealot Stalker plus Thy Templar drop coming forward. Oh, gee. Oh, gee, Willikers. Oh, gee, man. Oh, gee. Five Stalkers. They could take down those Medivacs. If they do, that's going to be huge. The Zealots do jump on the Marine Marauder, but he's got to pull back. Nightmare. Good pullback timing. Concussive Shells punishes him, though. A couple of the Zealots go down. This drop's still just waiting in the corner, dude. If he unloads in the corner and stims in there, he could do big damage. Honestly, I think Clem's forgotten about it as he takes a giant storm drop. 11 SCVs, not bad. Good pull, honestly, and spread from Clem. That could have been even worse. But I love the move from Nightmare. Threatens the front, rotates the prism, does the storm drop. Fourth base is on the way now. Clem's going to find the fourth base. But honestly, this drop's low impact. What are you going to do? Kill a pylon and a probe? Not a big deal. Raven's going to go into the main base right now. We've got the army crossing in the middle. Oh, get out of there. Zealot Stork has got to pull back. Oh, my lord. Oh, man. Oh, great storms. Great storms. Clem trying to force his way through the choke point, getting punished. Double order turret in the main. There's a cannon there, though. The cannon will do decently against this. It'll at least take out one of them. Another juicy storm. Clem is eating storms for breakfast right now. Honestly, he's shooting McGavin. And right now, Nightmare is Adam Sandler, a.k.a. Happy Gilmer, and he's handling him. He's handing him those turd sandwiches. And, and Clem is shooting McGavin them right up. But he's up in supply somehow despite that. Drop gets feedbacked in the main. It goes down. Fourth base does go down. I, I feel like he's eating some big storms, but he's actually doing enough multi-prong that it's still very scary for Nightmare. Nightmare gets rid of the tank, but the Widow Mine, the spread he's on the bio. The micro is so good. Nightmare losing that fourth is very expensive for him, and he doesn't have any Immortals or Colossus to back things up. This is rough right now. Um, oh me, oh my. Observer's over there. He's gonna, gonna set up. He's gonna set up. He does see the base. No fourth command center, man. No fourth command center for Clem. Fourth Nexus on the way on the right side. Zealot's going to think about coming in. He's like, okay, as long as you still got your mines buried there in your units, that is that. That's fine. Prism's still hanging around. I mean, he's got double Colossus on the way. I think Nightmare might have this. If Nightmare can get those first two Colossus out, I think that's huge for him. But right now he's defending with Storm and nothing else. Oh, he doesn't save the High Templar. He will lose one of them. Another Storm could stop this whole army though, right? I mean, that really damages him and slows him down. A couple Zealots with an overcharge. Should be enough, especially with the Stalkers there. He's going to bring his army back as well. Nightmare says enough's enough. I'm going to jump on this. Does lose a few Zealots to the mines. But you know what? He's going to take care of it. Stalker does go down to a mine on the right side as well. The drops get out though. Clem honestly escapes with a, more than he should have hoped for. If I was Nightmare, I'd leave three Stalkers over here and try to catch a few of these damaged units on the way home. I would have absolutely sent a few Stalkers there. You're not going to kill everything, but maybe kill one or two full medivacs would be massive. And he, he would have had the opportunity as well. Clem was pretty risky with the way he moved there. Uh, anyways, Clem's fourth command center has started. He's got double engineering bay, but he hasn't started 2-2 yet. He doesn't have the gas for it, which is a little unfortunate. I think these gases, yeah, they just started mining. Playing four gas for a while makes it really hard to transition into ghosts and double upgrades. Wait, wait, wait. He didn't even have an engineering bay this whole time. He's been on 0-0. Zero, zero? Oh my god, Clem forgot his engineering bay. I bet Clem felt so rich this game. He must have been like, dude, why do I have so much money? Everything's like so early. And then he realizes eventually, oh, oh never mind. Hold that thought. He, he, he stims and EMPs the prism, takes it down. That sucks for Nightmare. He just lost all of his High Templar. He's got three, sorry. He's got three High Templar, but they're scattered at home. He lost the prism with the High Templar, which is probably the most useful part. And bringing storms in can be massive in these fights as the game goes on, dude. Um, oh man, I eat pieces of storm for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of storm for breakfast? <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. Um, I don't know why that reference popped into my head either, Twitch chat. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, 
have not watched that movie in a long time. It was weird when I went back and watched it at some point, like, I don't know, eight years ago or something. And I was like, the girl's the mum from Modern Family. I didn't even realize it. I was like, damn. It's the, the Modern Family mum in, uh, in the happy place with the, the two big jugs of beer in her uh, kind of corset type outfit. Yes. Uh, anyways, High Templar running around. Oh, watch out. That's going to be a dead High Templar. But good storms and feedbacks, dude. And another one. Dude. Keep warping in High Templar. These guys are getting value. Dodges the EMP and feedbacks the ghost. Dude. Oh, man. Clem is getting ravaged by these storms. On the other hand, Clem's macro is still on point. Except for the upgrades. Finally, 1-1's one, about to finish against the Protoss. is on his way to 3-2. This is, this is, a, forgetting plus one this whole game has been massive, man. Not having a single eBay was huge. Stork has come forward. He does get a good blink, dude. There's three Colossus. There's four Disruptors by his. He can pull back and drop balls. Oh, man. Nightmare. Nightmare has this, I think. It's close. There's no Zealots. Where's the Warp Prism? There's no Zealots here. Dude, if he had a Zealot Warp and it's game over right now, Clem would be dead. But without Zealots to tank, EMPs plus Stalkers... It equals dead stalkers. You know, they die so quickly to the Marauders once they're EMP'd. Army's moving forward. He needs more Zealots. He's made stalkers here. He doesn't need to fight. It's 1-1 one, one against 2-2. Two, two. Great upgrade advantage for Nightmare. And and remember, that's that's kind of big. That Observer just outside of scan range. Extra Command Center is coming in. Plus 2 attack only now starting. Clem, he's been shook, guys. I think he's been shook. And uh, Nightmare is just playing such a solid match right now. He's really kicking butt. Nightmare is very good, guys. Nightmare, Nightmare regularly beats the best players like one in three or four times he plays them. The reason he's not a higher ranked player is it's only every one in three or four times, but he does beat the very best players in the world. People forget that about Nightmare. They just go, ah, oh, B tier Korean. You never really see him do well in GSL, but you look at his online performances, he is a very high ranked player. And he is very good, and he's up in that top 15 players in the world for a reason. Ooh, it's not over till it's over, though. Clem's very good at making comebacks. Looks like a Widow Mine's trying to run in that cannon, though. I think he tried to burrow two Widow Mines in there. The cannon's stopping him. Disruptors going flying. Do not leave your Disruptors hanging out. Gets a couple of Marauders. Got to throw another Disruptor to cover his retreat. Plasma Shields and plus three armor on the way. Two, two is still not done for Clem. It's only about halfway finished on plus two. Plus two armor only just started for him as well. So extra bases would be great. There's a bunch of good things that, that could go on here. Ooh. Oh, he retargets the Widowmine on the Colossus for maximum damage. Damn. Clem, you tricky bugger. Clem, you tricky bugger. I just don't know if he has the tools. He's got 10 Vikings now. So with with good enough micro, he definitely can win this game. I think this is a huge move for him. You know, EMP the Nexus so he can't recall. As long as he gets two full Metavacs out, it's well worth it. If he loses all three Metavacs, I don't think it's great. Uh, he gets two Metavacs. He tries to go back for more. He gets two Metavacs out. Let's lose uh, 20 supply of units. It's not too bad. Killing a base, it's, it's worth it in terms of right now. The income will drop for Nightmare, but in the long-term efficiency, that's actually a better trade cost for cost for Nightmare than it is for Clem. Uh, I'd love to see Nightmare just pump Observers right now. He's only got two. I'd like six across this map. I know it sounds a little silly, but I do think Vision is huge. And look at this. He sees the army with his Observer, and he goes, that's only a small chunk of guys. Blinks on it, takes out a bunch of Vikings. Clem can do nothing but run. But here we go. Clem comes in with a flank. The Disruptor shot on the south does well. Stalkers do try to blink out there. Nightmare's getting flanked a little bit. Disruptor shot's not really landing. Good spreadies from Clem. And the Colossus are falling to the Vikings. So are the Vikings to the Stalkers, though. Damn, dude. Clem's trying to chase right now. Clem on the warpath is a scary beast. And oh my god, Nightmare! Nightmare doesn't realize he's still chasing. He's not giving up on it, mate. He's still coming. Oh my god, Clem right now, I feel like he's channeling his inner, his inner Arnie from Pumping Iron. You know, it feels like I'm coming day and night. Uh, yeah, there's a, not, 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 a, not even trying to do an Arnie impersonation there. That's just a, a terrible, terrible uh, German voice. But anyways, High Templar coming forwards. Honestly, Clem, I, I, yeah, the High Templar are very good for stalling out the advanced feedbacks of the ghost, but that does not cancel the snipe apparently. Even though it does damage, I guess the snipe must have already been finishing as the feedback hit, so didn't quite get there in time. Clem, this is very dangerous. Is this paradise? Coming day and night? 
I don't know, man. Oh, he cops a big disruptor shot. Yeah, he's got to back off. He's got to back off. He's bled out too many units now. Clem needs to back off. He's trying to he's trying to basically pressure with his micro while another army hits the north. But but he's trying to like kind of scare back Nightmare without really necessarily earning that situation. Now he's got 3-3 three, three on the way. So the upgrade deficit is disappearing. Nightmare should look to fight before that's over. But I don't know if Nightmare's really been clicking on the units and paying attention to the upgrade advantage. I don't know if he has, man. I didn't tell Clem he was having an off night. I was going to say it as like a, a self-deprecating thing. Like, oh, you must be having an off day if I can go half an hour against you. I didn't actually type it. I deleted that message, guys, because I felt that was rude. I felt that was rude. And it, it was also underselling my performance. Oh, great. Storm on the north. Dude, the flanking High Templar. This is what you use High Templar for, guys. You come in from multiple angles. They can't EMP everywhere, and they won't see those High Templar coming from behind. This is how you use High Templar. Nightmare is very good with Storm. Is it enough to carry it through? Stalker's chasing him down. Colossus chasing him down. Those High Templar probably want to be morphing into Archons at this point. Or send them back to gather energy. They are miles away from getting another Storm. So he does go for the Archon morph. Not many EMPs available. Disruptors are far forward. He's not feeling confident clicking on the planetary. No. And that's a good call to pull back. Accidentally leaves an Archon out there. I don't think it's on his control group. That is what it is. An Archon going down, not the end of the world. How does Clem get to a sixth base? He's going to try and just float one out and hope that Nightmare is too busy elsewhere because he definitely can't defend it. No Dark Shrine yet. Stalker's picking off units left, right, and center. Seeing exactly what he can do. Zealot's getting caught by the Bio Ghost. Nightmare not finding the openings, man. His army's going to come down the south as those Zealots get cleaned up. These guys are here as well. EMPs, Vikings. Stims and stutter steps. Clem is on point. There is a sixth base for Nightmare uh, mining in the top. The Nightmare also will struggle if Clem ever gains map control. Nightmare has already mined out his side of the map a bit faster than Clem. Oh, the Vikings are getting shot down. Disruptor's doing pretty good. Stalker focus fire on the Vikings is great. He, some of that was focused, some of it was hold position. So that rather than going after the Marines and Marauders that were just out of range, they just shoot the Vikings that were flying forward. And, and overall, let's check this. 20 Vikings for 3 Colossus. That's pretty good, man. That's very, very good. Despite that, Clem's traded very well. Bio up against Gateway units. Hey, Stalkers get themselves a medevac. Not bad. Cannons going down en masse in the south. Realizing, ah, uh, if I pull back, Clem might be able to come run down there. But Clem's ahead of, the, ahead of the mark. Clem's ahead of the mark. The army does split. Oh, he recalls. But guess what? That opens him up on the north. Nightmare brings his whole army. He doesn't realize this is only a small part. This is what I was saying about getting a few more observers out there. So you, even if you lose one or two, you've got backup ones. Because you've got to keep track of this Terran army. He's going to lose a base and 20 plus workers. He's chasing down a bunch of units on this side. He's got to bust through the planetary though to really inflict harm on Clem. And attacking into a Viking bio planetary, it's like, there's just no way, man. Attacking into the planetary in this scenario doesn't work. But he feels like he kind of has to. Oh, he's got High Templar. Nice storm. Good storm. High Templar does go down, though. Stalkers will finish off those guys. There we go. Colossus. Oh! Does actually float into the camera. Damn. Plus three ship weapons is on the way. Clem has survived the scariest parts of this game. And he's got so much practice in the late game against Max Max lately. I've said a lot. Max Max's big problem is when he goes Sky Toss, he doesn't add Storm. Nightmare's big problem is he has Storm, but he doesn't have Sky Toss. And it was good for the mid game, but we're, we're getting towards the end game. This is going to probably be a range liberator transition at some point. I know I know Clem hasn't found the room to do that. He doesn't even have the Medivac energy upgrade, but he will find the room for that. Oh, Stalker's Blink on the Northern Army. Okay, we're going to use that mobility. He's got one High Templar with two Storms. If that catches the Reinforce coming in from behind, that could be massive. Clem, big spready. He's going to have to it. He's going to have to it. Does the High Templar get anything? Storms a few Vikings, but then does it get taken down? Disruptors do try to intercept down here. Stalkers happy to engage on all sides at once. Nightmare. It's equal upgrades now, but his army's kicking butt, dude. And the way he zones out that northern army, that was a spectacular engagement. And it's very close to even in the units lost, which is great for Nightmare. That being said, Nightmare's economy kind of sucks. He, he has to he has to go north and kill this, this planetary and then and keep doing moves like that. He's trying to go even deeper. Disruptors are ready. Yeah, he can just blink on that top base so easy. But he's got to protect his disruptors. Protect your balls at all times. That's what they say when you enter the octagon. Turns out when you enter Oceanborn as well, guys. 
Unless Mario Yamasaki is somewhere on the side of Oceanborn in a black and white t-shirt calling the rules. And I don't think so. Because he'd be like, yeah, just leave your disruptors here. He'd watch the Marauders kill 17 disruptors in a row before he calls game, man. He'd be like, no, no, no I want to see blood. I want to see you guys die. Anyways, uh, Stalker, Zealots, and Disruptors coming forward. And Bio's going to try to jump in from two sides. Orbital gets sniped. That's a brilliant maneuver. I don't know who's lagging right now. I assume that's not me. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if that was me or someone else. I hope it wasn't me. Dude, Clem still has a big army. He's got no, not much economy left. Disruptor shots are big. Disruptor shots are big. That one only gets a single Marine. But Clem chasing into this. There's, there's too much Zealot Stalker left over. Nightmare. Like, Clem's like, oh, I got I got to get damage because I lost too many command centers then. I don't know, man. I think without Lib Range, he's in trubs. He's got three Libs now with plus three. But he never got Lib Range. He never got Medivac Energy Upgrade. And guess what? They're out of juice. His Medivacs are out of juice. He's going to go for a desperate quad drop. Oh god, there's mass cannon there though. And I Templar! I've always said I Templar plus a pack of cannons and batteries is the most efficient defense that you can ever set up as a Protoss in the late game for drops and stuff like that because it's so supply efficient. What one High Templar with a storm can do to a pack of bio like this. Oh, Medivac goes down. Second one almost falls. Disruptors to intercept the bio. Clem with some very nice spreadies. We'll catch a few of these disruptors. Stalker's going to blink forward. Oh, a few of those disruptors caught in the lib zones. But there we go. An extra few go down as well. Dude, Clem's micro is so good. His micro is so good. He killed a bunch of disruptors. But top base is back up. Nightmare doesn't care about reprobing. He has a huge army. And he's now ahead. 3,000 resources in the units lost. Showing how efficient he started to be with these disruptors, man. Nice Colossus shots there as well. I like how he keeps mixing the Colossus back in. Because once again, remember, he's done a great job of killing the Vikings. 36 Vikings for 7 Colossus. The constant rebuilding of the Colossus is actually causing a lot of damage to Clem because the Vikings keep getting focused by the Stalkers. One Colossus goes down to the Marauders, but Clem does not have the numbers. And Nightmare actually plays an exceptional series that gets himself a 2-1 victory. GG, well played.